And the men are off for individual test number one. 3,000 meter ski, and it looks like someone needs to tell Dallin Pepper that it's 30, it's 3,000 meters, not 300. My man got on that bike real quick. I don't know if we got a shot of that, but my man got on the bike and uh, he revved it up. He gave it a little hemi action out of the gate. Now, again, if we were, if we were chasing calories, building that momentum can all right, well, speak to the difference there. What do you mean by that? Yeah, so, you know, when, when we exponentially work into calories, there's, there's an opportunity for us to rev up the fan speed and be rewarded faster for greater work early. Um, it, we even notice that as you slow down, the calories still continue to tick over at a bit of a faster rate. It's less for the Echo than for the Assault Bike, but also when you now flip the Echo Bike into distance, versus calories, you're not necessarily rewarded in the same way when it comes to effort. And what we've seen already, just like we alluded to, is that, hey, you can gain two to three seconds on somebody by going quite a bit harder on the earth, but it ain't worth it in this test. The lane assignments for your third and final heat in lane one, Evan Rogers. Lane two, Alexander Carone. Lane three, Jake Berman. Lane four, Marquan Jones. Lane five, Saxon Pancheck. Lane six, James Sprague. Lane seven, Roman Korenikov. Lane eight, Spencer Pancheck. Lane nine, Samuel Cornier. Lane 10, Dallin Pepper. Lane 11, Jeffrey Adler. Lane 12, Noel Olson. Lane 13, Jack Farlow. Lane 14, Tyler Christoffel. Lane 15, Jason Hopper. Lane 16, Will Morad. Lane 17, Cam Crockett. Lane 19, Seth Stovall. And in lane 20, Griffin Raleigh. Now I know there are 12 spots available mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for this men's division mm -hmm. here in the North America East. I think it's the most spots available across all semifinals for the men. But That's, I just let a, the read show. a list of 20 that all of them have an opportunity to make the CrossFit Games, and that's not counting some of the athletes in the earlier heats that didn't qualify for this heat in particular. That could be here. Like Alex Vigneault? Like Alex Vigneault. Been to the CrossFit Games a few times, got a lot of fitness in there. Yeah, I mean, listen, we are extremely fortunate to have a competition floor laced with this amount, the amount of veterans and the amount of fitness that is out there, and that's why this is the place to be. With 12 spots, this is going to be the most highlighted semifinal that we're probably gonna come across on the, on the male side. Um, each of these athletes feeling like they have a place uh, and a place to belong at the CrossFit game. So it's, it's gonna be amazing to watch them fight tooth and nail throughout the course of this weekend and see what happens. But I'll tell you what, I, I can't help, and I know people have commented on this on the stream, Roman is moving. And there's a lot of athletes out here where I could create like some harsh judgments, right? Like they're going fast and I'll be like, hey bro, you might be making a mistake. <laughs> Pump the brakes, big dog. But let me tell you something, Roman Kronikoff is not one of them. No. Roman gets on the machine and goes fast, and I'm just like, well, that's just Roman doing Roman things. Well, what did he say at the Rogue Invitational last year doing the basically the Echo Bike DT? It's like, my casual pace is faster than everybody's faster pace. That's right. Yeah. And when you're, when you're playing with house money, you get, to, you get to play with the field a little. Right? Like, Roman's got reserves when it comes to these ergs and his overall engine and power output. He's not a small human, so moving the sled should also be advantageous for him. He's a natural favorite when you consider what this, uh, uh, this test is made up of. But I can tell you that a vet like Roman has also learned to draw other people out of their comfort zone. Mm. There's a bit of that gamesmanship involved, especially in a long workout. It's like, hey, if I can get a couple other competitors to go a little fast too soon, I can really blow them up. And on cue, Roman Karenikov is up, followed by Jason Hopper. The other big dog. Samuel Corey, Jeff Adler, Dallin Pepper. Here they come. <laughs> the men of Heat 3 are all taking it to the first sled pull. It is very close, Larry. You can see on that now we get to watch and see what this sled is moving like. And, and, I, and I don't want us to put too much onus on the first three trips, right? Because what we've noticed is when you get off the runner, that's when we really get to see what your strategy looks like and how your pacing has affected you with the sled. But these guys are all making light work of the sled right now. 
Roman Karenikov, your early leader, off the Echo Bike first. Done with his first sled pull, but here comes Jack Farlow, Jason Hopper, another one of those athletes that, when we talk machine work, that guy is one of the best in the business, at least on the Echo Bike. That guy lives to succeed on the Echo Bike, but Dallin Pepper has closed the gap on Roman Karenikov. Dallin Pepper is in the middle left part of your screen. And Dallin Pepper having to readjust his sled as he runs the rope back. Roman Karenikov has now moved ahead, so part of this is navigating your sled on here on the rubber. Dallin Pepper had to basically fix his sled as you see Jason Hopper in the front part of your screen. So Karenikov slowing down a bit on the pole. And I don't know if there's a correlate here, Adrian. You would know better than I would, but one of Karenikov's weaknesses is high volume, upper body, gymnastic pulling. Can that manifest itself in this horizontal sled pull? As Dallin Pepper gets to the uh, air runner first. And he's established a solid pace here, even looking smooth on the runner as he's going to try to create some separation there. But you mentioned, could a Roman's upper body pulling be a limitation for him? And there's no doubt about it, Chase, but this one's very different. His body weight is going to create more of an advantage for him than a disadvantage. We often see his upper body pulling limit him in legless rope climbs and or specifically ring muscle-ups where he's maneuvering that 227 frame versus this 227 frame in this test specifically creates advantages, mass moves mass. But none of these gentlemen here are small as we look at Pepper listed at 215, we think about Hopper listed in at 220. Like the, the size of their body and the size of their engine is all an advantage here in this particular test. You got James Sprague, Roman Karenikov, Samuel Cornier, Dallin Pepper, Jeff Adler, Noah Olson, Jack Farlow, Hopper, Moran, Cam Crockett. I love it, people commenting on Dallin, they're like, yo, he looks way more jacked than last year. Uh, and I'm like, well, it's you know, puberty. He's, called, he's only 21 years old. He's it's called puberty. He, he's barely becoming a man. So we're going to watch that, that man continue to transform throughout his career. He and Jack Farlow both. One of these athletes I'm excited to see back in in-person competition, or not in-person, sorry, individual competition, is the man left of Dallin Pepper in the center part of your screen in the black shorts is Samuel Cornier, who went team last year. Man. Has had, I would say, a lot of hype around him about his individual capacity and skill set to be a force at the CrossFit Games individually. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, Sam Cornier is a tremendous athlete um, and, and, and one that can get overlooked, right, when it comes to, he was on a team last year, no doubt he's gonna be a bit rich as shadow, but you gotta think about the lessons that he learned being in that environment, day in and day out, preparing with that team, not just to show up, but to win. That's gonna allow him from a mindset perspective to not show up at the CrossFit Games this year or not show up at this semifinal with the intention to punch a ticket. He wants first place and he's been preparing himself not just physically but also mentally to put himself in that situation. I can't wait to really see how he plays uh, this, this event as we see all seven tests come together in the next few days. To the left of Samuel Cornier is Spencer Pancheck in the maroon shorts just getting to the runner pretty recently. Roman Karenikov to the left in the gray top, black pants. On the side of the competition floor, we've got Noah Olson and Jeff Adler. Noah Olson making sure his hair is on point, slicking it back during the run. They're called headbands, by the way. Yeah, he's got that coif. You know, it kind of it bounces. It's a little bit. It's, it, it sometimes gets displaced, and it looks good. I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't look good. To his right, you see Jack Farlow, one of the younger athletes in the field. He's in the black shirt, white shorts. To his right, you have Tyler Christoffel. Tyler Christoffel, another one of those athletes that is just trying to knock, break that glass ceiling to the CrossFit Games as an individual so close for so many years. Jason Hopper to his right in the all-black Nike shirt. And Will Morad. Will Morad might have been the story of semifinals last year with the largest comeback in a single event in competition history at 81 points. It was phenomenal. I mean, I remember watching it, not even expecting it to be possible. Right? Like, just kind of like, uh -huh, that's a bummer. Will's not, Will's not going back. He's had a rough year. You know what I mean? And then it, it turned into, like, the Cinderella story that 
the best Cinderella story we've seen in CrossFit. And, and the, on the flip side of every Cinderella story is heartbreak. And that's what we see in the front part of your screen. Next to Roman Karenikov on the right, just to his left in the gray shorts, no top. That's James Sprague. That's right. Who was in a comfortable fifth place position going into the final event, losing out by maybe one, two points to Will Morad's dramatic comeback. Yep. Yep. Unfortunately, there's always someone on the other end, and, and you mentioned that. And, and James Sprague is, is a young athlete growing up within the space. We've also watched him mature as he's 21 years old, a longer framed athlete, which, you know, many of these tests this weekend I, I really think can go in the favor of James. I know that he's spent a tremendous amount of time in Naples under the tutelage of, of Matt Torres and, and the Brute Squad there. He, he's training partners with Dallin Pepper. Like, they've been refining his weaknesses, refining and building up his strength. So I'm excited to see how, how he also takes this test. One of the things we've heard Hinshaw talk about is how you can kind of predict how some people are feeling on the run or on a run in general. You think looking at body position, shoulders, are they relaxed? Is it a smooth cadence versus kind of a sloppy trot? You know, and as you're, you're scanning the field, you know, these athletes can't see themselves do it. But, you know, Adrian, as you're looking around, you can kind of tell who's feeling comfortable and confident and those that are just trying to get through this 2K the best they can. Yeah, man, and I really like the, the cadence that, that Roman Kronikoff has got going right now. Um, he looks composed. He's yeah, still naturally going to have a pretty long stride cadence, or I'm sorry, stride length. Same with James. Um, and, we, and, and we've got something a little different here when we look at Spencer Panchik, who's got a bit more of like the, the hips leaning, leaning back, torso leaning forward. So I'm reaching with the steps a little bit more, and you wonder, well, will that be blowing up his hamstrings as, as this event unfolds or as the weekend unfolds? But yeah, you, you see good positive body language from most of the competitors at this point, which the, this is a pretty savvy group. Most probably understand exactly what Chris Hinshaw highlighted with us in our conversation through the last few heats is that you can't really gain much separation here and the juice isn't really worth the squeeze. You got the men bun battle here on the in lanes 19 and 20 between Seth Stovall and Griffin Raleigh. Then you have the James Sprague on the left side of your screen, Roman Karenikov to his right in the gray and black, Spencer Pancheck in the maroon. And you know, we can see Spencer's face, it's it's not the most comfortable as we see some of the athletes next to him, especially when we look over at Saxon. And Spencer getting to the runner a bit later than most people. It looked like the sled was causing him a bit more problems. And and, and that's that can be a double-edged sword there, right? When you find yourself behind in a longer event, what's that do? It creates some duress, you have some urgency. You wanna try to fight to find ways to make up time. And often it's 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 not worth it. Hopefully he can gain his composure here through the latter part of this run and be able to get off in a more strong state for those sled pulls to come. Jason Hopper on the right side of your screen, Tyler Christoffel and Jack Farlow. Currently sitting in lanes 13, 14, and 15. As we are at the midpoint of test number one for the individual men's. This is heat three, we've had heat two go. I believe that Alex Vigneault has the unofficial time to beat at 22.59, 30 minute capped event. We've already done a 3,000 meter bike. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We got a hand up for Jason Hopper and Hopper's not foreign to excelling at these longer workouts that involve some external loading as we watched him take event one at the Rogue Invitational this last October as well. And him being one of the athletes that we've seen also make steady strides within our sport is under the tutelage of, of Matt Fraser there at HWPO. And you wonder, is this an opportunity for Jason to have a weekend where we say, uh-oh, Justin, he's coming for you, right? Is, this, is that an opportunity? I think when I look at this, the overall programming layout, I'm like, hey man, they might have thrown you a bone with this weekend if you can <laughs> hey. do it right. Hey, and, and what do we see with athletes that have, they, they, they have a great event and then it carries over into competition. I will say though, you're talking about Hopper, that didn't happen for him at the MAC two years ago and his performance in the CrossFit Games. Goes out and wins the thing, disappointing performance in the CrossFit Games. I yep. think he flipped that a little bit last year. Right, right, Maybe right. this you're year right. he can really take it to the next level. Yeah, and that's what you want to see from a lot of these developing athletes is consistency, because that's what we see from Mr. Medeiros, right? And that's, of course, who they're all kind of gunning down and trying to dethrone. 
onto the second sled pull, 84 total feet. Off the runner first was actually James Sprague. He was making his way down for his second pull. Roman Korenikov has caught up. But we saw last time Krenikov had a great first pull, but the next two after that were a bit of a struggle for him. Adler here, the first one to join Hopper. Jeff Adler, middle part of your screen, gray shorts, no top. Fifth place at the CrossFit Games last year, fifth place in 2020. It's this year that Jeff Adler can get himself on the podium. And honestly, a rich history of Canadian men on top of the podium. Maybe you go all the way back to OPT back in the day. Right, James Fitzgerald. James Fitzgerald, yep. The first people to win the CrossFit Games in 2007. And then you look at the, the success we've had from Pat Vellner, Brett Fikowski. Can Adler be that new Canadian male superstar to join those ranks of elite individual men that have podium at the CrossFit Games. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, you look back, look at his resume. Just look at his resume, folks, because it does speak for itself. Jeff is a quieter athlete. You're not going to find him trying to make a presence for himself on social media, or, or I don't know that he has a YouTube channel. If it is, I don't follow it, but he, he's, just a, he's just a more soft-spoken individual that is more about the fitness on the field. But when you look at his history, it is rich. And it looks like James Spray continued his lead on the field after the 2K run and is on to the skier. James Spray, who had a great performance, as we just said, at last year's semifinal. And it all came down to the last event and basically a miracle performance by Mil Will Mora to miss out by just a handful of points. But when you look at Sprague's skill set, it shapes up, I think, very well for him in most of the events this weekend. There's not really that one rep max test. We, you know, we got a, we have a snatch. snatch under fatigue coming up. That'll be on, that'll be tomorrow, the test four and test five. Linda, we've got some heavy dumbbells in there. But as you said, if you have a chance to get 100 points, you go get 100 points. You go get 100 points, man. You have literally got to fight tooth and nail in this field. A mini CrossFit Games here on the East Coast. You have absolutely got to seize every opportunity that presents itself to you. And his long frame and his big engine can certainly take and seize the moment here in Test 1 if he can hang on to the pace that he's established. Roman Karenikov in the gray and black. Just to the left of James Sprague, who's on the right side of your screen. If you guys remember Jerome Karenikov and what that guy can do on a skier, what well, we saw at swimming stuff. Or rinse and repeat, sorry. Rinse and repeat. Last year, the CrossFit Games. But I am surprised that, as well as he's done in the machines, he has not struggled, but compared to the other top athletes in this heat, the sled posing a bit more of a problem for Roman Karenikov. Jay Sprague on the right side of your screen, first to the skier. On the other side of the competition floor, Jason Hopper was second. Yep. He's on the other side of the floor, so he, James will not, well, he could see him. He is facing that direction. Yeah, he, he's definitely going to know where he's at. If the hand goes up, he'll, I don't know that he'll be able to see the judge from there, but as they exit this ski, which we know, hey, this is, this is where the workout happens right here. This is where the, this is where the test is decided. And this is your full field, lane one all the way to lane 20. You see on the left side of your screen is Spencer Panchak. Yeah. Stuck on the sled, but his brother Saxon also yeah. Struggling. stuck on the sled. So the Panchak brothers are right now dead last along with, looks like Jake Herman. Yeah, you think about it. I mean, them, them weighing in at about 180 pounds, I don't know how accurate that is, but some of the lighter athletes in this heat 
That sled is going to cause some trouble for it. Hand in the air for Jason Hopper. Hand in the air for James Sprague. James Sprague is done. James Sprague off the skier. Now has three pulls. And this is where you can't waste a, time. But potentially get an event win here. You got to get the rope out of the way and get your sled moving. Unofficial best score, 22-59 by Alex Vigneault set in heat number one. Trying to see what the time yeah, clock is Yeah, we're in the 20-minute range right now. I can't see the second. Right around that 20-minute, James Sprague, center part of your screen in the gray shorts on the first sled pull. Jason Hopper, far right side. He's on his first pull. About 20, 25. We're about midway through the 20s, approaching 21 minutes here. Jason Hopper, bottom right, bottom right top of your screen. Top left sled. Uh-oh, we got a big snafu here with James' oh, sled. James literally Sprague. spin. Left side of your screen, Quick flipped fix. the sled when he tried to turn it around. So James Sprague had to run all the way back to fix the sled, and that's going to open the door for Jason Hopper on the right, bottom right side of your screen. Roman Karenikov trying to get through his first sled pull, but James Sprague, it looks like he's going head-to-head -head now with Jason Hopper. Jason Hopper, bottom right side of your screen. James Sprague, James Sprague now on his final sled pull, had flipped the sled over. He can't afford, now Hopper's on the run here, here we go. He can't afford to flip it this time, it's gotta be straight. James Sprague, James Sprague's sled is absolutely chewed up in the front part of that sled where Jason Hopper is a bit more. Jason Hopper, bottom right side of your screen. James Sprague on the left. James Sprague has been leading since we got off the air runner. And it's coming down to one final pull across the finish line. James Sprague, one of the youngest athletes in the field. Missed the games by a handful of points last year. Trying to pick up those precious points in this one. He's got an opportunity. Hopper's making up ground. Jason He's Hopper. now past him. Jason Hopper might have one more. Done. Jason Hopper will take individual men. Test number one. Sprague just a few pulls away. Sprague about one more pull on the left side of your screen. And that's just a handful of seconds as you can see Hopper. Roman Karenikov looking to hold Olsen, off Noah Olsen. 22-30 for, for Sprague. James Sprague unofficially 22-30. That should be good enough for second overall. The best time coming in was 22-59. So it looks like Jason Hopper could have picked up a very valuable first place finish for test number one. As Roman's across the finish line. Roman crosses the finish line. Jeff Adler, middle right part of your screen. Here comes Dallin Pepper on the left. Jeff Adler in the middle, Dallin Pepper on the left. Adler has about a 10 foot lead on Dallin Pepper. It looks like Adler may be in that next person to finish. As Dallin Pepper on the left side. No Adler, Adler with his hands on his knees though, given, given some reprieve here, he, it looks like he might have run into some trouble with his grip. Oh, he's back to work. Jeff Adler. Dallin trying to close the gap. Middle lanes, Jeff Adler on the right. Dallin Pepper taking a break, chalking up his hands. Tyler Christofel on the far right trying to finish his last pull. Here comes Samuel Cornier to the left. No Olsen running over for his five, but Jeff Adler will cross the finish line. Will Moore add into his final length. Pepper just a few pulls away here. Looks like Dallin Pepper, left side of your screen, be next across the finish line. We've got a few minutes until we hit that 30 minute cap. The guys just missed the end. We had a race between James Sprague and Jason Hopper. Jason Hopper ended up get to take the win as Sprague was having some trouble, trouble with his sled. Roman Karenikov has finished as well. The next to finish looks like it could be Noah Olsen. Will Morad is going to be a few pulls just ahead of Noah right now. 
They're literally going pool for pool here. I think Morad just overtook him. See, Will, Will about Morad. two pulls away, yep. Will Morad in the left part of your screen. Jeff Adler coming to the finish line. Alexander Carone trying to finish out his final pull. Less than five minutes to go. No Olsen left part of your screen, lane 12. Got about one or two more pulls left to go. Also, looks like one more pull to go. Spencer still just chipping away at his ski. Now we still have Jake Berman, Spencer Pancheck still on the ski as Saxon Pancheck. And we're seeing a few of these sleds causing a lot of havoc here. Marquan Jones, bottom right side of your screen. Samuel Corne is done. We have four minutes remaining. Four minutes at least. Got Seth Stovall, left side of your screen in the white shirt. And this is where for these guys, dude, any, anywhere, anywhere in this heat they finish, they have to have urgency. There's so many people now that they're fighting for us every second. All the other finishes from all the other heats. Seth Stovall is done. Below him, Dylan Pettit in the white shirt. To his left, Cam Crockett, black shorts. Pettit will be done. Marquand Jones, red shorts. About one more pull to go. He'll finish test number one for the individual men. Spencer Pancheck just got off the 1,000-meter ski. Hey, we're standing here with James Sprague, who came in number two in that heat overall. James, what are your thoughts on this test? How, did, how was it balanced out between the, the sled and the ergs? Was it what you expected? No, it wasn't. Um, when we trained this piece, we thought it'd be more of a machine bias. Uh, today, approaching it, we made it more of a sled bias. And, Oh uh, man, great, great start. Got the body really warmed up for a big weekend and just so stoked to be here. I got another question for you, man. I saw that your sled legit flipped over, man. In your mind, how did you recover from that to go get it quick, get it back on track, and then keep pulling? Yeah, you always expect a margin of error in competition. Not everything's going to go your way, so you make do with what you got. It cost me the event win, but hey, you know what? A second place is great. Just going for consistency this weekend, so you know, little things might happen here and there the rest of the weekend like that. Just gotta take them where you get them. Make do. Great job, brother. Thank you so much. Way to start this weekend out for James Sprague. Thank you for your comment, bro. All right, getting ready towards the end of individual test number one. Spencer Pancheck, Jake Berman. Two athletes out here on the competition floor. Got a few more minutes left to go. 30 minute time cap. And one part of this is, you know, part of the rules here, kind of the spirit of the uh, competition is having to constantly attempt to finish out the test. So you would probably assume like, hey, just take a break. We're not gonna finish this anyway, but part of the basically spirit of competition is continuing to take this test the entirety of the event. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, 30 seconds. 30 seconds left. 
Spencer Panchik on the right. Jake Bourbon on the left, and they'll get capped. And that is going to be a tough hole to climb out of to start the weekend. 60 athletes. You get one of those bottom spots. It's going to be tough to get out of that hole. Ten men on the floor for this sixth and final heat. Roman Krennikov, a man who stood on the podium in the CrossFit Games last year, currently sits in third place overall after taking third in test number one, be working out of lane number two. It's been great to see him have an opportunity to compete here in North America. Absolutely, and his performance at the games, he just won over everybody in the stands when it came to that. But this is one of the events that is going to be one that we're going to be curious to see if he's improved on. Those high volume muscle-ups have posed a problem for him in the past. Jeff Adler and Noah Olson, two men will be keeping an eye on here. As Noah Olson again going for his 10th straight trip to the CrossFit Games. Now, are we going to get full send first round, Noah Olson, or conservative <laughs> pace, what I, my coach told me to do, Noah Olson? There's James Sprague, who was the guy who was on the wrong side of that Will Morad comeback last year to get himself to the CrossFit Games. You know, some of that final test had some ring muscle-ups in there. So Noah Olsen is notorious for starting quick. He's got great gymnastic capacity, especially on top of the rings. This is one that sets up well for him. I'm very curious to see how Adler does on the left side. Again, he's traditionally been known as a good online athlete in, the, in his early days of his career. He was the strong kid at the games, but what he has done, and Carolyn Lambre, his coach, wife, have done to basically like re build him as an athlete. I think it's a playbook for a lot of people that are trying to maybe break that plateau in their career. Right now, Olsen and Adler are in the lead, and they are wearing that 20-pound ruck on their backs. Yeah, really talked a whole lot that. about that. <laughs> <laughs> Noah Olsen out early again. They have to do five single leg squats on each leg. They'll alternate each section. It must be unbroken. If they break, they'll just get a no rep. They won't have to start over again at zero. And Adler still in the lead here. Also, be the first man in the burpee box jump overs. And here comes Jeff Adler. Now, Samuel Cornway is there. And Noel Olson's family there in the stands. <laughs> It doesn't seem that long ago when Noah Olson was a rookie in 2014, wore the leader's jersey that year. And here he is going for his 10th appearance. It's a handful of men trying to accomplish that this year. Cole Sager, yeah, another guy. Yeah. And if you think about Noah Olson and you know his up and coming into the CrossFit scene as he was a volunteer at the CrossFit Games and was going to work his way into the competitive scene, Jeff Adler was the same kid not but six or seven years ago, volunteering at the games. He used to volunteer at Dubai as just being a kid out there. And now, on the big stage, making a name for himself, competing side by side to a, a guy who really had some of the same trajectory as him. Dallin Pepper, there in lane five, is on his second set of 10. Spencer Panchik is as well, and Roman Krennikov. Jack Farlow, also in the second set of 10. See, so everybody's just feeling this out. Is this the right pace? Did I start too quick in the complex? How is that burpee pace in my first 10 versus my second? We'll see how far everyone got. We'll rely on the placards on the floor. So right now in lanes five and six, it's Pepper and Adler with 18 reps. Olsen, well, his reach 71. We know that's not correct. <laughs> you won. <laughs> no need to do the next two rounds. <laughs> Bear Complex is offering fans the ultimate VIP experience of the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. You can scan the QR code now for your chance to win free tickets, a meet and greet with Noah Olsen, and a Bear Complex prize pack filled with top quality gear. 
I'm assuming the 71 is a 17. I'm going to say <laughs> that's a safe bet. <laughs> just go out on the limb. Yeah, they're getting that corrected now. Ten seconds. But only five reps separating, or six, pardon me, separating first from last here. In this final heat, there's Dallin Pepper starting his second set of five ring complexes. You have two athletes tied with 18. Olsen with 17. It's Pepper and Adler who got through 18 each. And then also in lane four, Sam Corwaye with 17 reps. Those are your top four. It's like Roman Karenikov got about 15. Oh, working their way through their complex. Sitting in the blue shirt in lane two on the left side of your screen. We you talked earlier, is that him just getting through this complex with the rest of the field will be a big win for him. Adler and Olsen again out front here in round number two. 48 reps from Will Moore out in the prior heat, unofficially the time to beat. Olsen making quick work of these one-legged squats, as is Jeff Adler. No Olsen in the first round is done right about a minute 12, a minute 15. So he had a good chunk of time to get through those burpee boxer mowers, but it seems like Jeff Adler and Noah picking up where they left off in the first round, a minute 40 seconds left. Olsen and Adler to the box at the same time. The only two men on the second set. Sam Cornwaye and Dallin Pepper looking to finish up next. Pepper's in the white shirt. Here comes Cornwaye. Adler now in the lead, advancing his box into that 20 to 30 range. Here comes Noah Olsen. And now Spencer Panchik onto his box jump overs. Roman Krenikov as well. Jason Hopper getting to work. The three of your top four men, they're on the screen. Now, Jeff Adler and Noah Olson. You got Dallin Pepper there on the left in the white shirt. It's Adler who's trying to hold off Noah Olson here in round number two. Roman Krenikov starting to creep up as well. He's in the blue shirt, bottom of your screen. And Dallin Peppers moved into second in the white shirt ahead of Noah Olson. The one thing about this ruck, Sean, is that it's a bit of an equalizer if you think about the size of an athlete related to the test that itself, right? This is three different gymnastics movements, which traditionally would favor a smaller, lighter athlete with those type of movements. When you add the ruck, it's a bit of an equalizer across the other athletes. So maybe the bigger, stronger athletes can navigate the bag a little bit more because of the, the you know the ratio to body weight to that. So that's the unique part about this test, about that Ruck really does for these athletes. Sam Cornway, I think, overshot his mark on those boxes when he was he advanced. We'll see where he is. But it looks like Jeb Adler is going to be your leader right now. Adler's placard reading 35 reps. For more on him, let's go to Sam Cornway. You mean Mike Arsno? Sam Cornway is on I mean, the field hey, right you're now. You're all Canadian, Both man. Very yeah. fit that Canadian. Is, uh, I was looking at Cornway's score. I understand oh my gosh. how you make that mistake. Anyway, Jeffrey Adler. <laughs> uh, most of these athletes, well, all these athletes knew these work, knew these tests in advance. Most of them, you would assume, would test these out at home. Jeffrey Adler did not because he wasn't able to create the same conditions. He wouldn't know what the floor type was on test one pulling the sled. He didn't know exactly what the standards were going to be here on test number two. So he didn't try it because he didn't want that extra stress of trying to create the same game situation at home. So he's attacking these for the first time here on the competition floor. Alex Vigno reporting from the floor there. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. My apologies. Third and final round and it is Adler in the lead. 35 total box jump overs. Will Morad unofficially has a score to beat with 48 reps. No final complex, the great equalizer. Have you been efficient with your movement? Are you sound in your technique? And is your stamina going to hold up for all five sets? Have you been trying to go and broken the entire time? And Jeff Adler in the green shirt, the center screen, is just looking very comfortable and confident on top of those rings. Or Noah Olsen on the right side, a little bit of a struggle towards the last one. A little extra effort to get that final dip. 
Well, there is Sam Cornwaye, the real one in the black shirt, joining Adler and Olsen along with Spencer Panchik on the one-legged squats. Now, these are going to be no problem for Noah Olsen, but his pace really started to slow in the back half of round two on those box jump overs. And, that, and that's the game you play. Do I need more time to get more burpee box jump overs? At what cost? Or do I need more energy to get there at the cost of time? And so you got to play that little game at the first two rounds and figure out what are you going to do in this third and final round. Olsen and Adler neck and neck here. Dallin Pepper, Sam Cornwaye, and Spencer Panchik. Spencer Panchik on the far end of the floor there on his final set of five. And and now Olsen and Adler to the box at the same time. Olsen took a second to adjust some gear. Adler ahead of him. Here comes Spencer Panchik. I couldn't tell if he loosened up the belt or tightened up the belt. No Olsen on the right side. He definitely was messing with that. It's a give and take there. You tighten up that belt, that bag's going to move around a lot less. Although when you tighten up that belt, you know, it's going to close down the lungs a little bit, the core a little bit when it comes to that. So. A couple different strategies here at play for these last minute of Burby box jump overs. I was talking to Pat Velder about this uh, a week or so ago, and he was saying, you know, if you keep that thing too loose, you run the risk of getting you know, a weighted plate right in the back of your melon. And that thing's moving around pretty well on, on Jeff Adler. I don't know if it's in his cranium. So this is 45 now for Adler as he's creeping up on Will Morad's top mark of 48. Now 46 down for Adler. Olsen's got 44 and counting. Less than 30 to go. Sam Cornwaye is moving up as well. He's trying to put some pressure on Adler and Olsen. Adler's through 50. As Olsen's family trying to urge him on here. Adler in the middle of the floor though. He is your leader right now. Three, two, one. And Jeff Adler looking like he just locked up 100 points. And the rock, and now you're getting into a triplet with barbells. But the one wrinkle here, as we had in the first two tests, that dumbbell on the bench. Yeah, the dumbbell on the bench. We got weightlifting, weightlifting, weightlifting. And, and to a to a stranger's assumption, they look at this and they're like, wow, they're just, well, they're just testing their ability to lift weights. And folks, that's far from true. The heart rate is going to get spiked very early. And what we're going to have to see is how conditioned these athletes are in the form of weight. So it, it is a bit of a unique test in that way. All right, question came through. Bruce Wayne, who are your picks for the men in test three? I'm scanning the floor. Give me a second here. Let me let me look. And, and, he, and I'm going to cheat because I want to see how they lay back, arms extended on these dumbbells, and how the first few reps look. All right. At the, by the looks of this, here's who I like. Look, some guys out here played some high school football. Hey, That's all I'm saying. Hey, Alex Vigneault Ooh. is making these 90s look like baby weight. Baby weight, folks. And Fournier gets off at the same time. They rocking and rolling. Hopper right there, coming out of Clemson football program, testing out the strength conditioning. See, was he was he putting in the work? We'll see. We'll see if he's putting in the work. We'll start off with ten of every rep: ten deadlifts, ten dumbbell bench, ninety pounds each, and then ten squat cleans at 145. They'll do four sets in one lane, three in the next, and three in the next. So they'll advance that bar as we go through. One thing about Alex Vigneault, who's on the left side of your screen in a light green shirt next to Dallin Pepper in the white. We didn't get it on the broadcast, but he was in heat one yesterday at test number one. And you asked him yep. how'd it go. And he didn't have anything to say about the test itself. He had something about to say about the weekend. That's right. His response was, this is not my heat. I will be in my heat tomorrow. And he's in his heat today as Alex Vigneault, Dallin Pepper, Jeff Adler, Samuel Corre, Roman Karenikov, Noah Olsen, Jason Hopper. Look at these guys just all ripping through the first set of 10, now in the set of nine. 
And a lot of these guys choosing to go unbroken, even on the deadlifts, it tells me that they're very confident in approaching this dumbbell bench press. Chase, there are so many transitions here built in to this test that it's easy to trap yourself in thinking, yo, I gotta go big on my sets, especially at the barbells on the ends. When in fact, you could probably take a little bit of a more uh, structured approach and how you're gonna break up the reps and then have some haste in those transitions and it can pay off. After the set of nine bench press, Samuel Cormier, hey, no surprise, you're coming out of mayhem. You, you, you're gonna be doing some bench press. You've done some, bench press some bench press in that program. That's absolutely true. Bench press and GHD sit-ups, which aren't, aren't, aren't here this weekend, but we know they'd be more than prepared for that. Yeah. That, that midline's getting taxed a little bit in this test, though. It's true. It's true. Um, it, you know, we talked about that even in our walk over here. You know, it, it was a discussion that, that's worthy having on the broadcast where it's like, hey, people assume because you're good at something, well, oh, it must be nice. You're good at this. You're good at that. Mm, yes. But when it appears in a test and you're good at it, boy, does it hurt. And boy, does it get the nerves rumbling and grumbling when you know you can excel at a particular test because it puts the pressure on you. A lot of these guys, their heart rate's up already. We're only two rounds in, and they've got this really annoying 145 pounds they got to catch in the front rack position and squat all the way down with it every single time. It adds up. All right, finishing up the round of nine. It's actually Roman Krennikov that has moved up with Samuel Cornway. Sam, on the right side of your or the uh, right side of your screen, no shirt, just moving up to the dumbbell bench press. If you guys can see on the right side, to his left, it is Alex Vigneault, Jeff Adler also in the sleeveless blue top, Jason Hopper in the all black to the left. So see these are your top athletes after two days, and what they're doing is middle out in the lanes as far as seating these athletes based off where they're on the leaderboard. Right. Adler laying back for his out of eight here. Courtney already working the barbell. One at a time, cool, calm, and collected. A deep exhale every time it receives the bar in the bottom of that squat clean. And it seems right now, Adrian is at the, the pace setter, which we thought coming in, but it, it is being manifested out here on the competition floor as a dumbbell bench. Yep. Yep. And, and a lot of it, again, is even the confidence around the movement, because if these guys know that they're going to struggle with the dumbbell, well, it's only worth it to go so fast on a squat clean, and therefore it's only worth it to go so fast on a deadlift, so they're breaking up other things, so they give themselves some more time before they get back to the dumbbells. Left to right on your screen, far left, you have Alex Vigneault, white t-shirt, Dallin Pepper in the white t-shirt just to his right. Moving up to his squat cleans, Jeff Adler, your overall leader after day number one. Jason Hopper to the far right, walking back to his deadlift bar. But your leader so far is actually Sam Conway, who is on his dumbbell bench press, and everybody else is on the deadlifts. Sam's got a bit of a neutral struggle there. He's got a bit of a neutral approach to the dumbbell position in his hands, which means his thumbs are facing towards his head and his pinkies down towards his feet. Dumbbells along his side, elbows close to his body, really using a lot of tricep there and a lot of shoulder. Sam Cornier just on the left side of your screen, no shirt, only one on the squat cleans in his round. He is starting to catch athletes like Will Morad on the right side of your screen in the all black. But Sam is a, just alone out here in the cleans, just off camera. You can see that barbell bouncing to the left. That's actually Roman Krennikov. So Roman Krennikov is holding on to second place. Alex Vigneault to the right, actually just got a no rep. Alex Vigneault is just to the right of Saint Cornier in the light green shirt, got a no rep on his first clean, and Cornier now advancing his bar. So he's out of the set of seven, moving into the set of six. And that no rep for Alex there was about depth in his receiving position. He stood it up, but he wasn't quite low enough. Jason Hopper on the right side of your screen in the all black working into his set. He's got two more reps. Jeff Adler to the left, center screen, green top. Four reps left to go. One rep behind Vigneault from the four on the far left. You know, one of the biggest separators, I mean, we, we talked about the bench press. Sam is confident there as he lays back again already with, my goodness, I'd say he's got at least a, a almost 40 second lead on Roman now at this point. 
is that when he gets to the squat clean bar, there is no shuffling of the feet. There's no chasing the bar. He looks angry, and I think I like Sam when he's angry. Hey, it's been a lot of hype, honestly, last year. When you think about him going team for Mayhem last year, everybody says this is an athlete, at least everybody in that camp, that has the potential not just to podium, but maybe potentially win the CrossFit Games one day. The boys are back. We got some new views coming in. You see Jason Hopper in the center screen in the all black. Looks like he's trying to overtake Roman Krennikov. So Roman Krennikov's on the other side of the competition floor. Right now, it's still the Sam show. Hey, man, you know what I love is you watch Jason Hopper, and you notice some Matt Krennikov. Nice he's in a relatively narrow receiving position in the squat clean. He's got that full grip on the barbell. Boy, does that make me think of Matt. Not, <laughs> not, not that he moves the same, and he's a very different, different large rig of a human. Right we were talking about actually yesterday about that and how much work he has been putting in to Jason Hopper's barbell technique. Yep. You know, Jason Hopper's obviously the athleticism that he has coming in after playing football in college. Right? He has the engine, he has the speed, he has the athleticism, but the technique with the barbell is something Fraser's been hammering on Jason Hopper, and he said it's starting to pay off. Yeah, you can see it. You see, we see it from his training videos and the different things that we, we see online when we're researching athletes. It's like his movement has developed, his movement has changed, and it's going to, of course, overall increase his capacity. As within our methodology, it's MCI, man. Mechanics, consistency, then and only then intensity, even from a regular, everyday standpoint in the affiliate. And even our elite athletes put that into practice. Sam Cordier is done with his round of five. And there is just no one even close to him at the moment. And it's really coming on the dumbbell bench. We talked about the dumbbells being a, a major player in this test. And if you guys are just joining us, this is Heat 3 Individual Men, test number three. Linda, 10 down to one, deadlift, dumbbell bench, and squat cleans. Sam Cornier leading the way. He's on his round of four. Time to beat 13-33. We're just approaching the not, uh, the 10 minute mark, or right about 9.30 at the moment. Center part of your screen, no shirt, black shorts, Sam Cornier just wasting no time. And now we're oh, seeing touch, touch it go, go, baby. Go. Touch it go, baby. <laughs> Let's go. I love it. I love it. I know it's only two, but I got excited. Oh, man, listen. Look, when you see that out of our seats for a little bit. When you see that bar recoil and you see the athletes hold on to it, you know that they've left just enough in reserve to make a real strong run and a real strong push to finish. And you love it because that means they pretty much nailed their pacing strategy at the beginning of this test, which is hard to do. See Will Moore on the left side of your screen in the all black. He's in a set of five, but Sam Cornier on the right, no shirt, moving up to the dumbbell bench. I, he has gone unbroken every round so far. Yeah, and he's bought himself some time, so he's taking a breath here. I see him glance up at the clock periodically. There's some gamesmanship here, making sure that it, not only does he take first in this heat, but he wants to take, a, take an event win or a test win overall. This podcast, we can say event win for the people. Thank you. Thank you for your grace. Sam Cornier, two reps, or three reps to go. Still opting for singles. Listen, he was just trying to test out the touch and go waters in the set of four. You know, dip that toe in, realize that that hot, that hot tub's a little too hot. Well, this is also where we talk about self-preservation a little bit throughout mm. the course of this whole event with seven, seven tests, right? You don't get extra points by winning by two minutes. Hey man, ain't no reason for me to win two minutes. I don't need to keep a world record for the next three weeks. I don't care about that. I want to get these 100 points that are available and let my body start to recover for whatever's next ahead. Now the race for second is to these athletes right here. Krenikov, Dallin Pepper, Jeff Adler, Jason Hopper in the backside of your screen is running to his bar. Hopper has about a three second lead on Krenikov, but Sam Cornier, two reps and then he'll go into his singles and roman's trying to pick up his pace a bit hopper's back laying back for his two is there we go finish those two reps hopper running to the barbell right side of your screen touch and go 
Here comes Roman. Roman's trying to short the extension in his plane just to get out of it quicker to catch up the hopper. I don't know if he's going to be able to close the gap at this point. But now it's going to come down. Sammy Fournier waving to the crowd. Let me hear you make some noise. Cornwye takes an event win here in semifinal Linda. Are you not entertained? He, he did it waving to the crowd and walking across the finish line. Jason Hopper, Jason Hopper. will take second place. Roman, Roman Krennikov. Krennikov in third place. All times underneath the time to beat, which was 13.30. These are all around the 12-minute mark. So your top three in this heat should be the top three in the event. Obviously, all scores are unofficial at the moment. Adler here on his round of two in the green shirt. Vigneault chasing him down on his round of two. Pepper also. These points matter for all these guys. It's got to be a race to the finish. Vigneault running back to the barbell. Oh, it's a race for singles. Vigneault in the green. Dallin Pepper. Jeff Adler's running to the finish line. Jeff Adler actually gets ahead of the entire trio in front of Sprague, Olsen, Vigneault. Here comes Dallin Pepper in the white. One last rep for him. What a big finish wow. for Jeff Adler. We had about five guys all yeah. separated about five to ten seconds. And Jeff Adler squeaked ahead of all of them. Trying to see if we got any uh... Hatfield across the finish line. Still got Luke Parker out there. Looks like he's on his set of two. Will Morad. Will Morad still chipping away. He's on his set of two. Barlow. Looks like Jack Farlow just crossed the finish line. Time cap here is 17 minutes. What do you guys want to hear from Sam? Want to see if we can get Sam over here? Sam Cornier, what do you want to hear? All right, people finishing up here. Got about a minute left for the time cap. Got a few athletes here on the competition floor still. Joshua Wood saying Luke came out way too hot. I didn't get to see how his initial pace, but I don't think Rich would be surprised. Sam Cornet over here. All right, Sam, your chest looks great on camera. <laughs> it's I great on say, your chest. You got a nice chest pump. How are the dumbbells for you? You make those look so easy. I mean, I don't have the strongest bench, but I think everybody know, everyone knows that my pressing game is pretty good, so I was just confident in moving them. Um, I just, like, in the middle of the workout, I start by like, stuff fighting, try to bring them on top, and be like, you know what? I'll do one more, put it faster, easier on the muscle. So. Yeah. For, for your pacing wise, was it the plan to go unbroken on the bench the whole time or were you nervous and maybe tipping the scales into a little bit of that, that failure? No, I didn't plan to go unbroken on the bench and I did plan to go single all the time. 
Um, I think I did two judging. It wasn't instead of four. I was like, nah. Yeah. Hey, you we got, got, you got us really like, excited. Oh. I was like, nah, I'm good. Look at the time. Look at Jason. I was like, I'm good. Now, um, now when, when you're out there, are you looking at the clock, knowing what the time to beat is, and realizing? Say that again, sorry. When you're out there, are you looking at the clock, knowing what the time to beat was, and dictating your pace? I, I did heard like Tyrant got 13 something. Yeah. Um, but in my mind, I was like, I want that sub 13 no matter what. So. I was looking at the timer, making sure that Roman and Justin Offer was not, you know, yeah. pushing me. Like, I was actually resting on the bench, looking at Jason. He was finishing his clean. I was grabbing my dumbbell. And from now on, I was like, all right, I got this. That's awesome. Yeah. Hey, since we say your last name wrong all the time, <laughs> will you say it right one time for the podcast? All right, so in French, like, the real last name would be Cournoyer. 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 Yeah. Cournoyer. That's good. I like it like that. Yeah. It's fine. Like a dog with some I'm peanut butter it. on his mouth. Yeah. Hey, yes. man, congratulations. Right, you, Great yeah. job, brother. Good luck the rest of the weekend. Thank you. Ten men on the competition floor, and lane one is Benoit Boulanger. He's important because right now he's in 12th place. He'd be the last guy to the CrossFit Games at this point. He's trying to hold off Spencer Panchik and Jack Farlow, along with Norman Woodring. All three of those guys put up solid results in either both or one portion of this back-to-back -back test. So pressure is on Boulanger to hang on to 12th place. Sean, I'm just looking at the, lifted, the listed max snatches for the athletes in this heat, and it's just basically the number three up and <laughs> down the line, which is absolutely crazy how far we have come in this sport. And what a better example of what the training methodology can prove is that not only do we have that, but we got people running sub five minute mile pace 800s on the back end of these tests from back to back, hitting 300 pound snatches, running sub six minute miles. That's what it's all about. Jason Hopper, second place overall after a second place finish in test three. Dallin Pepper. Fifth place overall. He's one of the three men who's finished every test inside the top ten. He's got a ninth, a tie for fourth, and then coming off an eighth place earlier today in test number three. It's one of those athletes just gets better and better every year. Still incredibly young. He's 21 years old. He's got a lot of talent, and he's got a long road ahead of him, and he's just naturally just getting better as the time goes on. And Chase, you'll be shocked to hear this, but Noah Olsen in the lead early. Hey, Noah Olsen. <laughs> Somewhere Max L. Hodge is like, slow down. <laughs> it doesn't count yet. Noah trying to make his 10th straight appearance at the CrossFit Games. And then next week, Cole Sager will be going for the same mark. It's Sam wild to think it's been that long. No. See a nice, good, conservative, comfortable pace in this first 800. Nobody's pushing the tempo too much. The 800 is merely a buy-in to the barbell. Don't want to tip the scales too far when it comes to this test before we get to what really matters in test number four, and that's how much weight can we lift at the end of this six minutes. Will Morad, Noah Olson, James Sprague, and Luke Parker all on the screen now. Olson was out front early here. And there is Will Morad, the man who pulled off that incredible comeback last year to make it to the cross games, coming at the expense of the man two lanes down. James Sprague, Morad right now, ninth place overall with 214 points. Above a 300 pound lifted, one rep max snatch. The one I'm curious to see is one of the things that Sprague has been working on is that strength. Jason Hopper, it was part of that Basically, 300-pound snatch yep. party at the MAC about two years ago in that final heat on the first day of competition. Judge's hands starting to go in there. There's your overall leader, Jeff Adler. Never finished lower than sixth. He's been refocusing his training recently to get himself onto the podium at the CrossFit Games, and he has looked solid so far this weekend as Luke Parker is the first man off. Here comes Noah Olson. Noah Olson making his way to the barbell as well. Alex Vino, Jeff Adler. Okay, right in that time frame we've been seeing, 315 to 330. And Benoit Boulanger is off. 
And Moulin J is going to start at 215 as Luke Parker just hit 230. And Noel Olson, upper part of your screen at 245. And he will make it. And Jeffrey Adler's going to jump up to 255. Vino at 265. A lot of 255s out there right now. Two minutes to go. Oh, Hopper in the back left and the black shorts look very good on that. Jeff Adler hit 255. He actually opened up with 225. And Adler is one of the stronger athletes in the field. And it was just to get enough extra touch on the barbell. Sprague just hit 255. Here's Alex Vino at 265. Vino, who also has a 300 pound snatch, had the quote of the day yesterday. He was actually in lane one in test one. And we had asked him about his performance because he had won his heat. And he simply said, This isn't my heat. My heat is tomorrow when I'm in the final heat. Benoit Boulanger just hit 235. He's at the bottom of your screen. There's Adler at 275. Will Moore at 275 is good. Hopper's good at 275. Noah Olsen at 260. Good Alex save. Vino looks like he's jumping up to 280 here. I don't know what Adler's going to do yet. We'll keep an eye on his judge. Here's 280 for Alex Vino with less than a minute to go. Vino's good. At 280. Jeff Adler's got 285 on the bar. He has yet to make an attempt. Meanwhile, Benoit Boulanger just at 245. Jason Hopper at 295 is good. Oh. Now 30 seconds left. The bar just has to come off the ground before the time cap. Adler has 285. Dallin Pepper at 290 is good. He's got to stay in the box, yeah. Finish it up there, and he's got it. Vino fails at 290, 15 seconds to go. Noah Olsen stepping up to 270. Adler at 290. Hopper, 305. He's running out of time. He's got to get under this. Alex Vino just made 290. Hopper oh. is going to get it. 305 to beat the buzzer. Jason Hopper will lock up 100 points with that lift, edging out Jack Farlow by five pounds. And that looked like his best lift, start to finish. Had to walk out the 295. He comes back in less than 30 seconds and nails 305 like it's nothing. Now, Will Morad had 295 on his bar, and I'm not sure if he made it, but let's take a look at what happened here at the end. Once again, it's just frantic. Morad, you can see, missed. Hopper hits 305. Cornelier with a big lift. I believe that was 280. Luke Parker, I think I saw a 300 in the back left. I might have seen Luke Parker if the, if the, if the signage was right. In those last five seconds, Luke Parker may have hit something around 300. All right, let's take one more look. It's Jason Hopper at 305 is going to take test four and add 100 points to his total. It's his second test win so far of the competition. So one more look, and let's look upper left. Upper left, Luke Parker's in the all black. They haven't flipped the scorecard over yet. Takes weight off at the last second and adds, does he add a bar or plate? 30 seconds. Back left, Luke Parker. And what wow. The weight, yeah. 300 and that, That's pounds. what it says. Yeah. So that'll do it for Luke Parker. He'll tie Jack Farlow for second. So another big last second lift. As we have the reset to get into test number five. Stand by. Right, here we go. Test five underway, eight snatches at 185 pounds in the 800 meter run, and it's Roman Krennikov with the time to beat at 302.97 seconds. Eight reps, unbroken or bust. That's your only option at this point. If you want to claim the top spot, if you want to get under 302, 
This is what it takes. And not only do you have to go in broke, but you've got to cycle the bar quickly. Here comes Dallin Pepper and Sam Cornwallier, along with just about everybody else. Now, Benoit Boulanger will be the last man at the bottom of your screen to the runner, along with James Sprague in the white shirt top of your screen. Eight of the 10 guys, the first eight guys, all around 26 seconds, which is about three seconds ahead of Roman's pace when he got onto the runner. Jason Hopper was peeking over to his right and checking out Jeff Adler's screen. You see his eyes wandering a little bit just to make sure he's staying on pace. Son of Chris Henshaw in the first 200 meters in this 800 is the most important. You've got to get that belt going as quickly as you can. After that 200, maybe back off your pace about two to three seconds when you're looking at a mile pace. And, and here, usually on the runners, it's, it's registering in kilometers. But then, we, I mean, we've all been there. We've been there at the of that back end of an 800, the back end of a 1,000 meter row. Once we start tipping the scale to 300 meters left, 200 meters left to go, we're going to see who's either fit enough to take it or who really wants to sit in that dark place for those last couple of 20 to 30 seconds. Will Morad out front early here in this final 800 meter run, ninth place overall. Best finish was a third place in test number two. Trying to bounce back from a 20th in test three earlier today. Helped his cause with a pretty good lift in the opening portion of these back-to-back -back tests. Didn't hit 295, but Jeff Adler now starting to make a move on Will Morad. Adler has improved his running dramatically over the last couple of years. But the incredible thing is that he hasn't lost really any of his top end strength. He goes out and wins the back nine, but he wins the back nine basically you know, all natural, we'll just call that. No belt, no sleeve, no no lifters. Adler's just pure strength. And his judge's hand is in the air, and he's the only one. And now Cornwallier's judge's hand is going to go in the air, along with Benoit Boulanger, who has made up a lot of ground here. Boulanger at the bottom of your screen in the all-black. Judge's hand in the air for Luke Parker. For Jason Hopper. Alex Vigneault, but Jeff Adler, 302.97 seconds is the time to beat here. You see Jason Hopper starting to pick up the pace a little bit. Yeah, Dallin Pepper, bottom to his left, is leaning into that run. Adler is off, and Adler may have done it. Here comes Boulanger along with Will Morad, and Boulanger just throws himself across the finish line. And it looks like Adler is going to take it. Three minutes flat. Three minutes, 0.79 seconds for Jeff Adler. Another win for our overall leader. Here are the 10 men in the sixth and final heat. Noah Olson in lane number nine, looking for his 10th career appearance at the CrossFit Games. Now Noah has the skill set to do very well in this test, but can he pace himself out early to su succeed on the back half? Luke Parker is in ninth place with 349 points. He still has some work to do to get himself safely Stand inside on. the cut line. He's had a roller coaster of a weekend, 21st, 4th, 17th, 3rd, 15th. So he's either outside the top 15 or bottom 15 or inside the top five. We'll see which one shakes out for this. But Luke Parker, pressure is mounting, being in a qualifying spot for the first time in his career. Well, Nate Ackerman in heat four had the top time at 11.09. Spencer Panchik went out and shaved about 50 seconds off that at 10.17. We'll see if anybody can take a significant chunk off of his mark here in heat six. As it stands right now, Panchik 46 points out of a qualifying position, made up 40. Now, a couple things can happen. If he holds the same top time with these 10, that lead will extend. If they all beat him, that lead's gonna shrink because those points decrease as you bump down the leaderboard. Will Moore out of Noah Olsen, the first two men to the rower, Sam Cornwallier and Dallin Pepper behind them. Here comes Roman Krennikov, Jeff Adler, Luke Parker, and Jason Hopper. And now Alex Vigneault is there, along with James Sprague at the far end of the floor. He's in the yellow shirt at the very back there. Nice relaxed row pace for Will Moore and Noah Olsen.
Well, early on, James Sprague, who's in 10th place overall, is towards the back here in this heat, but still a lot needs to be done here. Oh, we have a lot of work left to go, but for Sprague, it's one of those tests that he's a little bit of damage control potentially for Sprague. Mike Arsenal has more on James Sprague. Mike? Well, when we talk about the biggest comebacks in CrossFit event history, of course, we think back to the Syndicate crown when Mo Will Morad made up an 81-point gap in one event against James Sprague. James finds himself in a qualifying spot right now. I asked him if that issue from last year has entered into his mind mentally whatsoever. He said, in mentally, no, not at all. He had a glaring weakness in that event last year. That is not the case in Test 6 and Test 7. In fact, he says Test 7 coming up is going to be his best event of the week. He shored up his weaknesses, so we'll see if he can maintain that game's qualifying spot here in 2023. I think one of the things people forget about last year is we talk about the 81-point deficit that Will Moore had made up, assuming that Sprague was in a fifth-place position. James Sprague was in third place in that position. That's how wild that finish was last year at semifinals. Just about every judge has his or her hand in the air as... These men get set to finish up their 500 meter row. No shock, it's Roman Krennikov who's off first. <laughs> Meanwhile, he was taking a nap on the row and still finished faster than everybody. <laughs> Noah Olsen and Dallin Pepper are out along with Sam Cornwaye. Three pirouettes along this. It does not have to be unbroken end to end. Just these five foot segments must be done unbroken. But you have a pirouette every other segment. The one thing that can't happen is the hand touch the outside lane lines. Well, Krennikov is through first. Noah Olsen is right behind him, as well as Sam Cornwaye. Roman right to work. Will Morad in lane number eight, chalking up his hands. Noah Olsen now getting to work on his two-seated legless rope climbs. Krennikov is already through one. You guys are just joining us. The standards here is that you must be seated from the floor, hands below the bottom tape line. To initiate the climb, your feet must lift off the ground, and then you can start climbing. The hands must be at or above the top tape line. Olsen and Morad on the left there with their second reps, and now they'll move to the wall. Dallin Pepper in lane four is also on his handstand push-ups. That is Jason Hopper. Krennikov got a no rep on his second one just for extension at the top. Shoulders must be stacked over the hands, over the elbows, that full open upper body to lock out. Left side of your screen is our overall leader, Jeff Adler. Coming off a test win in test number five yesterday, he's got two wins so far this weekend. But Noah Olson took out a big chunk of that set of 20 before he broke, and he is flying through these. Now just three left, two. This will be the last one, and Noah Olson heading back to the rope. And he's behind Will Morad to his left. Morad just ripped off 20 in a row. Will Morad with one rope climb done. Sam Cornway on the left is also on his second and final set. Cornway a fifth place overall. One test number three. Roman. Bottom right side of your screen, struggling a little bit with these last five handstand push-ups. Roman is one of the bigger guys out there. Will Morad heads back to the handstand walk pirouettes. And Cornway and Olsen will join him soon. Here comes Noah Olsen. Noah Olsen! Morad not able to get through that first one. It's like Cornway got no rep on the left side of your screen. And those are big, big reps. When we're talking the seated legless climb. And Morad, this is a this is one of those things that actually is stemming from the legless climb, is that the climb is gonna take away a lot of that upper body strength and that 
time under tension, that pull, Morad feeling it on those pirouettes. Jeff Adler has now moved himself into third place on the left side of your screen as Noah Olsen gets started on his second and final 500 meter row. Dallin Pepper is getting set to go through his three hand stand pirouettes. He's just kicked up. Noah Olsen, 30 seconds, 36 seconds ahead of Spencer Pancheck's pace in the previous heat. Morad should be ahead of that as well. Morad had that little stumble early, but once he figured it out, he actually went unbroken the rest of the way. Here comes Roman Krenikoff, and now Dallin Pepper as well in the black shorts, no shirt. Adler will get himself onto the rower along with Will Morad and Noah Olson. Noah Olson coming in in eighth place overall, 359 points as Sam Cornway still has one rep remaining here. Oh, that was close. That was close. That was very close. They did give it to him. No Olsen continues to lead and takes the time to give a wave to the crowd. Roman Krenikov now just got onto the rower. So that means they'll get out 10 seconds ahead of everybody. <laughs> Luke Parker is also onto the rower. Dallin Pepper as well. Six men. Going through their 500 meters here as Sam Cornway is about to be number seven. And Jason Hopper as well. Noah Olsen is done. Ten minutes, 17.76 seconds for Spencer Panchik is the top time right now. <laughs> yes. No Olsen. For, for better or for worse, lives off the vibe of the crowd. And he gives it back as much as they give to him. And Will Morad has started his overhead squash. And now Jeff Adler getting set for his first 10. But Noah Olsen looking to pick up the test win here and get one big step closer to his 10th trip to the CrossFit Games final rep. And Noah Olsen is going to take test six. Nine thirty two point seven zero seconds. Will Morad is across. He'll take second place. The third place still up there for Jeff Adler, who has 10 reps remaining. Third best time now, 10.17. Roman Krenikov is on to the overhead squats. Dallin Pepper and Luke Parker both getting ready to begin. Adler to Pornet. Stay ahead of Jason Hopper and Dallin Pepper to maintain that first place position overall that he has. Karenikov, who's on outside looking in, currently sitting in fourth, can inch a little bit closer to that podium position with Jason Hopper just getting off the rower. Well, Spencer Panchik's going to take third. That'll lock up 94 points for him as he looks to get into a qualifying spot. Adler is now across the finish line. Adler will take fourth place in the test. 10 minutes, 30.73 seconds. Roman Krenikov has his final rep in front of him. He's done. And Luke Parker getting ready to start his final set of 10. Dallin Pepper's got three left. Pepper will be the next man to finish. Pepper in the middle of the floor is in. And now Luke Parker, ninth place coming in, 349 points.
and Parker is in. Now, meanwhile, James Spray, who came in the 10th place overall, only seven points up on Jack Farlow, is still on the rower. Sam Corlay is in, and there goes Jason Hopper across the finish line. So Alex Vino and James Sprague, the only two men left on the floor. We look at Austin Hatfield, who is holding on to that 12th place position. We look at Spencer Pancheck, who is behind by 46 points as it stands. Hatfield's time or his score from the previous heat is 23rd overall. Pancheck's down three spots. So Pancheck, 23rd place is going to get you 44. Pancheck sitting at 94. That's now a 50, 50 point, point swing. swing. Out by 46, it looks like he could be in by four points coming into the final test. Here comes James Craig, Noah Olson, and Dallin Pepper there to cheer him on. The Sprague again was only seven points up on Jack Farlow for 10th place. Ron Ortiz and James Briggs' dad right there. Ron Ortiz, the designated dad to the CrossFit community. <laughs> This look at the shoulders, the elbows, everything. Just straining to do everything he can to hold that overhead position. Well, Alex Vino is moving to his final set of 10 at the other end of the floor. He's got Adler and Krennikov along with Luke Parker out there cheering him on. Vino just dropped his first attempt to get to this final set. Spray. This is the final rep for James Spray, and then we'll find out where he sits in this test, and he is in. Sprague is going to finish 24th. 42 points for Sprague. And now final three reps for Alex Vino. And Five for Vino 514 total. And Noah Olson is going to pick up 100 points. He came in in eighth place overall. Ten men on the floor here for this sixth and final heat. Jeffrey Adler, your overall leader with 540 points, will be right in the middle of the floor. Jason Hopper is 39 points back at him. And right now it's Dallin Pepper who sits in third, but he's only five points up on Roman Krennikov. Five points on Roman Krennikov. <laughs> Jason, between Jason Hopper and Roman Krennikov, you're looking at an echo bike and two of the best in the business. Not something I think I would want to be good at, but these guys make <laughs> it look easy. Now Alex Vino comes in in 10th place overall. He just has to avoid a total disaster. For Alex Vigneault, he was actually in the first heat of the weekend, and we talked to him earlier after he won his heat in test one of the weekend. He goes, this isn't my heat. This is the heat I'm supposed to be in. And he made it all the way here. 10 seconds. Stand by. Five, four, three, two, Right, Final heat underway. 413.33 seconds with Tyler Christopher. That is your top time. <laughs> okay then. <laughs> oh, screw my keys to success. Go for it, guys. Roman Kredikov in 17 seconds. 
Get out of here. Krennikov off first, Vino second, Jason Hopper third, now Dallin Pepper's fourth. Dallin Pepper has finished every test inside the top ten. One of the few men who's actually done that this weekend. Oh, let's talk podium for a second here, Sean. Top three. Right now you have Jeff Adler in the lead with 540 points. Jason Hopper at 501. But trying to run him down is Dallin Pepper, who's only five points back. 20 points back, Roman Karenikov and Will Morad. Krennikov is off and onto the bag. Vino second, followed by Dallin Pepper and Jason Hopper. Now Sam Cornoyer is working his way down the floor along with Noah Olson, Will Morad, Luke Parker, Adler, and Jack Farlow. And now Vino back to the bike. Second round, you get back to the Echo Bike and you start to think, did I make good choices in round one? <laughs> Obviously not talking about Roman Krennikov. He, he knows what he's doing on there. Judge's hand in the air for Roman Krennikov and Alex Vigneault. Vigneault is going to get off at the same time. Alex Vigneault, 416 total points coming in. Again, just has to avoid a total meltdown here. But the podium's not set, Sean. Roman Krennikov, 20 points back of Jason Hoppers in second, but only five points back of Dallin Pepper. Dallin Pepper, far left side of your screen in the teal shorts, currently sitting in third, only has a five-point lead on Roman Krennikov. Krennikov now with three reps remaining. Vigneault is just about done, and he will be first off just ahead of Krennikov, and here comes Dallin Pepper. He's moved into third. And now Jason Hopper working his way down the floor. And Dallin Pepper has moved into the lead. Third and final round here. Krennikov is done. And it looks like Dallin Pepper saved a little juice for the end. Had one of the fastest, actually, back carries we've seen of our top five men in this heat. The top two on the screen right now, and Alex Vino is also pushing these guys. He's down in lane number 10. Dallin Pepper on the left, still sitting in third place coming in. Vino's judge's hand went in the air first. He's at the very far end. You can barely see him now just slowing down, hopping off the bike, so he will get off ahead. Jason Hopper. Jason Hopper went to plaid on the bike, and he is now in the lead. Roma Krennikov's got that big swing on the right side of your screen. This one's going to come down to a race on the bag. Pepper takes oh. a break with two remaining. Everyone else has kept going. Hopper's got three remaining. Pepper gets through the toes to bar first. First to the bag for Dallin Pepper. Hopper's right behind him. Jason Hopper has moved into second. Krennikov behind Hopper in third. Dallin Pepper is going to win test number seven. Hopper is in behind him. Here comes Krennikov and Alex Vino. Four athletes under four minutes. Luke Parker is in. There's Jack Farlow, who is in ninth place coming in with 417 points. Noah Olsen is across. Farlow's going to come in. And Will Morad will be the last man to finish up. But Farlow's going to take 15th in this test. I don't think that's going to be a problem for him. All right, we are ready to do this. Let's go down to floor announcer Larry Moss. Here we go. We are going to start with third place. Our third place male athlete, Dolan Pepper. In second place with 598 points, Jason Hopper. In first place with 613 points, Jeffrey Adler.
Folks will now go fourth through 12th. In fourth place with 575 points, Roman Karenikov. In fifth place, with 538 points, Samuel Komwaye. In sixth place, with 535 points, Will Morad. In seventh place, with 521 points, Noah Olson. In eighth place, with 513 points, Luke Parker. In ninth place, with 507 points, Alex Vigneault. In 10th place, with 477 points, Jack Farlow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, only two spots remain. In 11th place, with 460 points, James Sprague. Ladies and gentlemen, only one qualifying spot remains. In 12th place, with 439 points, and going to the CrossFit Games, Spencer Panchak. Yeah. 